Right, so we're going to move on to the sense of mass. Uh, but I just want to remind you, in the previous chapters, even chapter 3, uh, if you recall, we would often have these problems like um, there is a beam or, a, or some object that has a uniform mass, right? Or a uniform beam. What was that? What did that mean? It meant that the density throughout this object was uniform. It means it was the same everywhere. Um, and then what did we do, if you recall? We said, okay, we want to replace the um, we want to replace this with a single force acting through the center of gravity or the center of mass and what did that help us do it helped us uh, replace this loading of gravity right this uh, gravitational force that was distributed across right throughout this this beam and we replaced it with a single force and then that allowed us to for example take moments about certain points and calculate um, reaction forces so if there was so this is a nice example here so as you can see there's a distributed loading but we can we can determine where the center of mass is somewhere on this beam say it's there and we can sum up the total loading on this on this body and place it at a point called the center of mass and now we can use that and we can calculate so we can get d there we can calculate moments about this point we can we can then we can go back to these guys some of the moments is zero some of the forces is zero and we can then go and calculate any unknown forces that we need all right so it's the idea is to, just as we saw in chapters 2 and 3, you can replace a number of forces with a single force acting at the center of mass so that it has the same externally equivalent loading, right, on the, the body, which then allows us to determine the required forces that um, these supports can experience. What is the center of mass? What is the center of mass? It is, again, I'm, I'm trying to introduce intuition to you. If you've got an object and we locate its center of mass to be there, for example, the center of mass is a point where it is as if all the mass, all the mass of that object is located at that point. And so, if you, uh, if if this is in a gravit is in a gravitational field, then it's as if Earth is exerting a gravitational force only on that point. All the mass is located there, and so gravity is acting. Although in reality, it's acting on every single point, right? All all over this object. But it is as if it's acting on that single point. So, now, listen to this. If you go and apply a reaction force there, for example, let's call it a reaction force, what is going to happen to this object? What is going to happen? Well, can you see that there's going to be a rotation? Because I'm applying a force over there, a reaction force, gravity is effectively applying a force there at the center of mass or the center of gravity, and there's a distance between these two, and so this object will have a rotation. And there might also be, if these two forces are not equal in magnitude, then there might also be either a downwards translation, a downwards acceleration, or an upwards, right? So what do I need to do so that this object is in equilibrium, for example? I need, to, I need to move this reaction force so that it is aligned. It is aligned with, with the center of gravity. It's complete, right underneath the center of gravity. Or it is, a, it is above the center of gravity. 
the lines of action of these two forces need to be the same. So then what will happen? If they're the same, then I'm going. there won't be any rotation because I'm applying that reaction force uh, in the line of the center of mass or gravity. And, and we'll get to the difference between center of mass and gravity, okay? And if I, so th if I align it, then what I'm doing is I am canceling out any rotational effects. But then, if I make sure that this R, my reaction force, has the same magnitude as the weight, then I'm also canceling out any linear acceleration. Okay, guys, so that is kind of an, a bit of an intuition. Um, if you have any object and you locate where its center of mass is and you apply a force there, right, then it means that the only thing that that force can do to this object is to accelerate it in a linear fashion. Whereas if you apply a force like over there, okay, then there's going to be this perpendicular distance and it is going to cause a translation but also a rotation because you're not applying a force on the center of mass. Okay, so this is a little bit of intuition. Um, let me stop now and then I will actually get into this stuff in the next one.